So welcome back. For all the people that don't know me, my name is Claudia Vidor. I'm a nutrition and dietetic clinician, the founder of the Recovery from HA Support Group and the Period Comeback Protocol. And today is all about answering the question, can I lose weight after getting my period back? And I'm going to divide this live into three parts. The first part is going to be about mindset shift, um, nutrition and exercise. And then I'm going to give you a couple of bonuses towards the end of the video where you can really learn how to practice all the things that I've just discussed over the video. If you have any questions, please make sure that you join the comments below. If you're watching this on um, on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe. And if you haven't done that already, I'm going to wait. Have you done it? Done it now? <laughs> but honestly, just make sure that you subscribe because every single time that I receive a subscription or a like, it makes my heart shine. And how beautiful is it to make someone smile for the day? And really doesn't take much. It's just sending a comment or hitting the subscribe button. That's how fast it goes. And if you're looking for support over the next few years, uh, uh, over the next few months, I shall say, to get your period back, to get pregnant, um, to let go of some of your mindset and behaviors around food and training, um, if you want to feel more comfortable in your body, always make sure that you let me or my team know the period comeback protocol is going to open again in March to welcome more women. So make sure that you just let us know if you're interested in joining. So can I lose weight after getting my period back? The first thing that I normally invite women to think about is to have that holistic well-being taking over the the weight loss idea. So let me explain that a little bit more. So it is quite limiting to fixate only on weight loss, and it's important to embrace a more holistic perspective. So well-being, feeling healthy, extends far beyond the numbers on a scale and encompasses physical, mental, and emotional health. So if you start redirecting the focus to overall well-being and what it means to you, you can definitely cultivate a sustainable and fulfilling approach into health. So instead of fixating on the number, it's more about asking yourself, what does it mean? For me to feel healthy, to feel or oh, to feel empowered. And maybe some of you are gonna say, Oh, I wanna look different, but other people are gonna answer, I just wanna be strong. I just don't wanna get sick. I don't wanna feel dizzy. I wanna be able to wear a dress and feel feminine inside of it. So always shift that perspective from what what is the number telling me that I look like today to how do I feel today? How do I want to feel like today? Something else that I would like to mention even before I keep on going with all the other things is stress and how stress has a major, major impact on hormonal health. So stress has really a profound impact on our hormones and chronic stress can disrupt hormonal balance, potentially leading to issues such as irregular menstrual cycle, but also disorder behaviors around the way that you look at yourself, the way that you eat and the way that you train. So shifting the narrative from weight loss as the primary goal to a stress management, um, to stress management perspective, let's say, as a more imp impactful strategy for hormonal harmony. So introduce stress reducing techniques is a very a valuable tool for optimizing your overall health. So I normally encourage practices such as mindfulness, meditation, yoga, um, journaling, and all of these have proven have been proven to mitigate the effect of stress on hormonal function. So integrating all of these strategies while you're working to feel stronger in your body can actually allow you to have much more fun in this new journey towards health, okay? Something else that I really advocate for is body positivity. Body positivity and more than anything else, self-compassion. Those two to me are non-negotiable if you want to have a healthy mindset and if you want to have a good relationship with your body. So we all know the detrimental impact of negative body image on mental health and hormonal imbalance. So cultivating self-love, acceptance, appreciation for your own bodies, regardless of what the scale is telling you, is absolutely paramount. So I do emphasize to really focus on uh, creating this positive relationship with your body 
before even getting started on a journey to lose the weight. And some of you that has been working me, with me, they all know that I am painfully slow when it comes to make changes and going from A to Z, especially uh, with weight loss, because it's not only about seeing changes in the scale, that's going to happen, but it's also making sure that your body is not responding in a stressful way to the changes. So it's not going to basically prevent you to ovulate and to have a period once again. But I also want you to foster the beautiful, uh, the beautiful relationship with yourself. Feeling empowered, feeling feminine, feeling strong comes way before seeing changes on the scale and also letting go of behaviors such as weighing yourself daily or counting calories or having to exercise every single day to to earn the food also those behaviors that definitely come um they need to be debunked first before making any changes on the plate or at least that my perspective and a perspective that has been working extremely well for my clients obviously also for myself and i've noticed women going from from going uh, from doing this process to 10 years without without disorder behaviors again so trust the process start it today don't delay and start making changes that are really going to be helpful for your long-term health and uh, some of the changes that i've just mentioned are definitely self-compassion and body positivity and if you don't know what it looks like for you just let me know so that i can help you out um so basically just to sum it up shifting the mindset from weight from weight centric goals to holistic well-being it's more sustainable and it contributes to lasting health so it's important to empower a woman, an individual, to approach the health journey with a focus on balance, self-care, self-love, and really recognizing that true well-being goes hand in hand with a positive and nurturing mindset. So that's what I believe in. And that's something that I wanted to say even before talking about all the other changes regarding nutrition and exercise. But because I am a nutrition and, nutrition and dietetic clinician, then obviously the next step is going to be addressing food. So normally when I have women that come to me that had more than two or three regular periods and they really want to feel more comfortable in their body, I just invite them to start by embracing a mindful approach to eating. So inviting awareness to each bite, savoring the flavor, savoring the textures and nourishment that the meals provide is step one, really. This conscious engagement that with your food fosters a profound understanding of your body needs. Because if you don't really pay attention to the kind of food that you eat, if you don't allow enough time for your digestive enzymes to break down the proteins, to break down all the particles that are within the food, you're going to experience lots of digestive issues. You, you're then going to experience some bloating, constipations and diarrhea, and that's not going to make you feel great. Plus, when you have a mindful approach towards eating, you also start realizing, oh, I thought that I like this, but I really don't enjoy it. Maybe I should try and experience something else. And it's also going to <clears throat> uh, take away the fear, the fear of eating too much, of eating mindlessly. Um, I'm not a big fan of people eating standing in the kitchen or eating while watching TV because ultimately if you're eating, that's all you need to do. If, for example, you're speaking with a person, that would be very rude to speak to a person while checking Instagram, even though so many people nowadays do so. Um, and it's the same thing with a with your food just pay attention to it spend time with it foster a great relationship with it and see what where that's going to take you something else that is really important is also to prioritize nutrient dense foods that offer a spectrum of vitamins mineral and essential nutrients so we're talking about the colorful vegetables lean proteins whole grains and um, and really good fats so by choosing nutrient-rich options, you provide your body with the building blocks that it needs to make sure that you can sustain a period. So for example, if at dinner you have a whole cabbage and shredded cabbage with some carrots and just a little bit, bit of fat on top, that's called volume eating, but you're missing out on lots of protein, fats, and, uh, and minerals that are important for a balanced diet. Also crafting well-balanced meals that 
has that beautiful synergy of proteins, fats, and complex carbohydrates. It's very important, not only to get your period back, but also afterwards and for the rest of your life because it helps with the appetite. So you're going to feel satisfied after finishing the meal, but it's going to allow also a sustained release of energy. So it's going to stop the blood sugar levels to fluctuate in a way that disrupt the hormones. Okay. So also understanding that your dietary choices plays an important role when it comes to your energy level, brain fog, um, how you experience your periods. So painful, not painful, 40 days long, 50 days long, 30 days long. It's, it's also fundamental. So as you may know, proteins contribute to muscle health and hormone production, healthy fats support brain function, hormone synthesis, and complex carbohydrates provide a steady source of energy and they all work together to create the foundation of hormonal harmony. Not only that, they're also going to support your thyroid and your brain to work in the optimal, optimal state. And it goes without saying that it's going to also boost your immune system um, and it's going to allow you to be stronger than ever. Something else that I, I just touched upon, but I really would like to underline is the importance of having a stable blood sugar level um, because that's very much connected with uh, regular periods, regular and painless periods and steady energy. So fluctuations in blood sugar can trigger a stress response in the body and that impacts the hormones. So it's always better to... Um, choose foods that really maintain stable blood sugar, such as whole foods, such as whole foods, um, once again, proteins, those beautiful fats, combining macronutrients with each meals. And whenever you can, you can also start minimize the amount of re refined sugar that you eat. I know that every single food is welcome and there is absolutely um, part for every single food in your diet, in your table. Um, but I always encourage to look for those nutrients that are conducive to optimal health and longevity as much as possible. So normally I say that 70% of the time you have those foods like the complex carbohydrates, the proteins and the fats that can really help you to have a healthy thyroid and healthy hormones, then you can play around with the fun foods that you may enjoy having here and there because they're part of a very balanced diet. And last but not least, really empower your plate to be a source of vitality and equilibrium. So through mindful eating and thoughtful food choices, you're going to embark on this self-discovery journey of well-being. Um, and you're going to be able to really create a profound understanding between what works and what doesn't with your body and with your hormones, which is really special because that means that you're not going to need anyone else outside of you to really tell you what agrees or doesn't agree with your body. Um, but that comes with time. There are lots of women that, for example, they finish, they get the first period and they want to start eating uh, intuitively. That it's, a, it's a big topic nowadays. Um, I know that lots of women that have been controlling themselves, they really want to go back to health while eating intuitively at the same time. And in the beginning, uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be that easy because you need to make sure that you have your hunger cues on track, that you really have a good understanding of what your body needs and that your mindset has been healed from all those years dealing with restriction um exercise so let's talk about how to balance your exercise so that you can have periods periods until they don't come any longer because you hit menopause or perimenopause so one important thing is to diversify the workouts so blending strength training to uh, to build resilience to some cardiovascular exercise such as walking for example and restorative practices for recovery um something that we may need to explore in a different video or that you can ask me separately is about how to train in relations to your period and how to eat in relations to your period and if you start uh, to if you start to diversify your workout it's going to be much easier to incorporate those changes in different time of the cycle so that you can have once again very um, nice pain-free uh, beautifully colored periods one after the other each and each and every month um, it's very important 
important also to understand the impact of excessive exercise on hormones. If you had hypothalamic amenorrhea, you may know about that already, but it's really important to emphasize that exercise, even after you get a few periods back, um, has played a role when it came to your period um, gone missing, right? So it's fundamental to find that balance between the exercises exercising because you want to because it calm down the anxiety to allow in those rest days and to allow that the diversifications of the workout so by fostering an understanding of this delicate equilibrium then you can tailor that your exercise routine to support rather than compromise your health one important part in this is to listen to your body listen to your body signals Listening to what your body needs is a corner store, cornerstone, sorry, bigger mouthful for me, of holistic fitness. So it is crucial to recognize when rest is essential, um, as pushing the body beyond its limits without adequate recovery can really contribute to poor health in, in general. So be very careful to signs such as fatigue, stress excessive strain, recurrent injuries, and make sure that you pay attention to these little ways of your body that is talking to you. So incorporate rest days into your routine. There are a few things that I normally say, just book it in your calendar. And one is five minutes with yourself to debrief. So for example, five minutes for journaling, five minutes for meditations, five minutes to really sit in the present moment and have a nice cup of tea. Plan your meals as well. Just make sure, ensure that you don't skip meals, that you have space for your um for your snack. And last but not least, also plan your rest days. If they are in the calendar, you're more likely to stick to it. If you know that Friday is your rest day, that's what it's going to be like. Friday is going to be the day where you go for a walk, where you have some time with your friends, where you do some stretching, eat just if you need to. And that's pretty much it. There is no need for you to go to the gym. There is no need for you to squeeze in another workout. That's already enough. And also sidetracking a little bit. If you're working out in a state of panic, in a state of anxiety, always remember that um, exercising is a stressor. And if you are already stressed, that's not going to be conducive of healthy hormones, healthy periods, healthy health. <laughs> so make sure that you schedule rest as an integ integral part of the exercise plan. Okay. And last but not least, be aware that exercise should be a source of vitality, not a stressor, which means that it's important to approach fitness from an holistic point of view where some, some cardio, some strength, some rest, some flexibility are all welcome, but it's important if they come from a place of joy. If you are doing an exercise routine, for example, a YouTube video, and after 20 minutes, you are seriously hoping for the video, video to be finished because you don't want to spend one extra minute doing these little exercises. So that's a call for you to stop and do something else. Just go for a walk, take a two, two weeks break. If there is something that you don't enjoy doing any longer, stop doing it for a while and then reassess. Okay, There is no need for you to keep pushing yourself. If you have an injury, don't exercise. If you're sick, do not exercise. If you are in a period of extreme stress, instead of going to the gym and lift harder or going for a run, just make sure that you practice some in yoga or some gentle yoga or a very gentle mat pilates class or simply go for a walk in nature. That's going to definitely be conducive of, um, of well-being more than powering through and pushing through at the gym. So a few of the things that I talk about, the first one is the mindset. Shift that mindset from being uh, weight-centric to really discovering what is important for you. What does it mean to be healthy? And uh, really foster that positive relationship with your body while allowing self-compassion into this journey. When it comes to meal preparation, make sure that you don't skip meals. Um, allow them to be a combination of macronutrients and add some 
mineral minerals and antioxidants on top of it and always start looking at your um, at the choices that you're making 70 to 75 percent of time because if you start eating this way you're gonna see changes in your body no matter what okay when it comes to exercise you can absolutely return to exercise but just a little caveat make sure that you don't do it when you're stressed, when you're injured, when you're tired, when you need to go to sleep and when you don't want to be there. So, for example, if there is a time in the months where you don't really want to go to the gym, then don't go. Who cares if you paid for it? Simply don't go. Come back the week after. Come back the day after when your energy is back. Also, you should exercise differently on the different phase of the cycle slow down on the luteal phase slow down during menstruation if that's appealing to you it it is different for some women but always make sure that you don't stick to the same training routine for the duration of the months because that's gonna increase your chronic stress and that's gonna allow the the fat cells to hold on to you because they perceive that you are in a state of stress okay um they perceive that you are in a state of threat more than stress so a couple of things here use your period as a metronome making sure that you are very well educated on how a regular menstrual cycle uh, looks like Make sure that you hit all the milestones in the menstrual cycle. So make sure that there is cervical mucus, make sure that you're ovulating and make sure that your period comes within that 25 to 35 days window. If you stick to this thing, then you know that your training routine and your way of eating is not having a negative impact on your period and your vitality and well-being. If you still have a period and you are absolutely tired and you get injured very often, that is still a call from your body to do things differently. Same thing if you get sick all the time. If instead you skip ovulation or you skip a menstrual cycle or if your cycle becomes too long, that's another sign that you may need to take it down a notch and uh, and go, go in a little bit slower. And then something that I really would like to emphasize is the importance of a personalized holistic approach because there is no a one size fits all solutions. And that's when I said in the very beginning, I sometimes am painfully slow with making changes when my clients got the period back and want to lose weight because I don't want them to start the whole HA recovery process again because that's really frustrating, very painful and very disheartening. So I'd rather take it one step at a time so that you can see changes, um, positive changes as you go. And you're going to get to a place where um, you have developed enough self-compassion to understand when it's time to exercise, when it's time to eat and when it's not. Um, and then you're going to be able also to foster a beautiful relationship with, with your body and you are going to have this clarity of what health looks like to you. And if health for someone means being fit and skinny and going to the gym five days a week, it doesn't mean that that's the definition of health. Okay, find out what health means to you. Look it up on the vocabulary, look it up, look it up online, see what the definition of health is and then apply it to your own circumstances. Um, then obviously, once again, because I'm a, a holistic nutrition and dietetic clinician, I always invite women to discuss um, their nutritional changes, their physical changes, their exercise changes with a professional because it makes it much safer, much easier. And how cool is to have an accountability buddy, right? And someone to go to when you need to ask questions. And then... One last thing that I would like to say, I'm going to highlight the significance of a gradual, sustainable approach to weight loss for long-term su success. If you're looking for a quick solution, if you're looking to get back to the body that you had before you lost the period within a month after getting the period back, let me tell you, you are not, um, you're going to hit a roadblock very soon. So here is your chance to do things differently. For all of you that have been listening until to the end, thank you so much for being here. If you need any support, make sure that you reach out. As I said before, the Period Comeback Protocol is going to open its door again in March. But if you need some one-on-one individual help uh, just to shift 
from the state that you are in at this moment, reach out to my team, reach out to me, send me a DM, and I'm going to do whatever I can to help you and support you and guide you over the next couple of months. Thanks for being here. And once again, if you're in your, on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe. So you're going to make me happy. You're going to make me smile. And I would love to receive a to smile a lot today. And I wish the same to all of you. Thank you so much. Bye for now. See you next week.